Salvation is like a marriage experience. Did you know that? I've performed many, many marriage ceremonies. No matter what they plan as far as music is concerned or dresses or whatever they plan, that doesn't make a lot of difference. That's just the trimming. The important thing is that the groom says to the bride, I will. I do. And the bride says to the groom, I do. Not I feel, not I know, not I think. I do. There is a commitment. And the Lord Jesus Christ comes to us and says, I want you. Trust me. And we say, I will. And we are married to the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 7, verse 4, that we might be married to another and bring forth fruit to God. Know the joys of that marriage relationship the forgiveness that he gives us, the peace, the privilege of fellowship and communion and prayer. When you marry the Lord Jesus Christ, you take his name, you become a Christian, and you share his wealth. You're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our Lord is saying to the disciples of John the Baptist, the Christian life is not a funeral, it's a wedding feast. Now, there are days when we have sorrow. There are days when we have trial. No no question about that. But those days of sorrow and trial are surrounded by joy and confidence because we're married to one who takes care of us. And Jesus says to us, now, I'm taking you for better or for worse, for richer, for poorer, sickness or in health. I'm yours. You're mine. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine, says the bride in Song of Solomon. And we belong to him and he cares for us and he'll never, ever leave us or forsake us. He is the great physician. He came for sinners, not for the righteous. You say, well, I'm a sinner. Then Jesus came for you. He's the bridegroom. He came to bring joy, not grief and sadness. And thirdly, He talks about mending, verses 16 and 17 of Matthew chapter 9. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear is made worse. You see, in those days, they did not have pre-shrunk material like we have today. So there's a rip in a man's old garment. He puts a new piece of cloth on it, sews it on. The next time it gets wet, it starts to pull away and it's not done permanently. Now, he changes the image in verse 17. Nor do people put new wine into old wineskins. They didn't have bottles such as we have glass. They did have pottery, of course, but they used wineskins. They would put the wine into the wineskins, and then as the wine fermented, the wineskin would give. But uh, the old brittle wineskins couldn't give anymore, and so they would uh, crack, and then they would break. And what happens? or else the wineskins break, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. You've lost the skins and the wine. But they put new wine that is still fermenting into new wineskins, and both are preserved. He's the physician who came for sinners, not for the righteous. He's the bridegroom who came to bring joy and not sadness. And he came to bring the new, not to patch up the old. He is the one who brings the new. Now, this third illustration, the cloth and the wine, answered the Pharisees. The Pharisees said, well, now, let's just patch up the law. Let's just uh, bring renewal to the old covenant law. And Jesus said, no, no, you can't do that. You can't patch up your life. That's what people want to do. They, they look at their lives and say, well, I've got a problem here. Jesus, you took care of that. And I've got a problem here. Jesus, you take care of that. But Jesus doesn't do it that way. He takes that old garment of sin with all of its rips and tears and filth, and he gives you a brand new garment. If you want Jesus to patch up your life, you're not going to have that experience he wants you to have. He wants all of your life. He doesn't just want to solve your financial problems or your physical problems. He wants to take all of your life, likewise with the wine. They said, well, now, Jesus, we like some of the things you are doing. Why don't you use it in our receptacles? Let's work together. He said, oh, no, that won't work. That won't work. I will destroy what you've got, and you'll destroy what I've got. No, he brings the new life. He brings the new beginning. Not a partial patching, but a complete new robe. Not a temporary 
patching, but eternal life, that which is permanent, that which is eternal, not something mixed, but that which is pure. So the tragedy is that people don't want a new life. They want, uh, oh, they want to be sure they're going to heaven, but they want to live their old life. Oh, yes, they'd like to have new power and, and, and new uh, support and maybe new success, but they don't want a new heart. And the Lord Jesus doesn't do it that way. He brings to us that which is new. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are become new. He doesn't just patch up your vocabulary and clean up your uh, uh, voice and your, and your speech. No, no, he just makes a whole new person out of you. And this is what the Lord Jesus is talking about. And this is what the Pharisees did not understand. They did not see themselves as sick sinners. Therefore, they rejected the physician. They did not see themselves as lacking true joy and love. Therefore, they rejected him as the bridegroom. They wanted him to patch up the old life. They wanted some of Moses and some of Jesus. He says, no, I can't do it that way. I won't do it temporarily, and I won't do it partially. What I do is complete and permanent, and you have to receive me, and they wouldn't do it. Now, what are you going to do with the Lord Jesus today? Are you a sick sinner? Then he can heal you. He can forgive your sins. He can bring you joy. He can change your life because that's why he lived and that's why he died. Thanks for joining us as we celebrate 75 years of ministry with today's message by Warren Wearsby. Just a reminder that spending time with God and His Word is the key to true spiritual growth. That's why Back to the Bible has developed Go Tandem. Go Tandem is a mobile scripture app that walks with you. That is, in tandem with you throughout your day, bringing God's Word directly to your smartphone or email. Just download Go Tandem free of charge from your mobile app store. Then customize your GoTandem experience by taking a short survey to determine your specific spiritual needs. After that, set the schedule for your messages to arrive up to 12 different times a day. Each message will help you take an honest look at what the Bible says and how it applies to your life. You can also add your own personal notes, even share the message through email or social media. It's a great way to grow spiritually and share God's Word with others. Whatever you need to focus on, from overcoming temptation to building healthy relationships or having hope during uncertain times, Go Tandem can help by bringing God's Word into your life throughout your day, every day. So download Go Tandem to your smartphone today. Remember, it's free. Just look for Go Tandem, that's Go, T-A-N-D-E-M, or visit backtothebible.org. Now, let's return to our program. Let me encourage you with this reading from Romans chapter 8, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Jesus Christ is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. For 75 years, God has used Back to the Bible to lead people forward in their relationship with Christ. And that's our prayer for you as you listen each day, that God would use the truth from His Word to encourage, to challenge, to inspire, and maybe even correct. 
because it's only when we become doers of the word that our lives change for the better. Thanks for being a part of today's program. Tune in again tomorrow as Warren Wearsby wraps up the week with a message about the only way to experience true peace and rest. We hope you'll be listening then. Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow. God bless you.